Previously on Do-It-Yourself Vehicle Rigging. So now we can move to the most recent phase of the testing, which was the upgrade of that kind of tow hitch approach. So rather than using that isolator that I borrowed from Mick Smith that we just didn't have enough weight on to make it work properly, I stole the isolator off that cloud mount and shoved it on the tow hitch. Let's have a look at those results now. So always a good idea to strap things down, something that I regularly forget, as you'll know from one of the previous videos where the camera fell off the car. Really good way to get a secure strapping point in a vehicle are these kayak straps. So it's basically just a piece of a piece of uh, rubber pipe with a um, nylon strap coming off it and you shove it into the void of your door and then close the door on it and it gives you a nice solid point that you can run a ratchet strap or a safety off to the um, whatever your car rig is going to be. And then over here I've got as my witness camera, this is a little, it's like a broadcast quality GoPro style thing. So it's a Marshall CB503, it's got an SDI output, runs off 12 volt. Uh, you can it's got interchangeable lenses so you can pick your focal length and it just means that I'll have a Shogun in the cab with me that shows me a witness camera view of the rig at all times so I can see if anything stupid is going to happen like camera bolts vibrating loose which as we know is something that I now have to keep an eye out for because I suck uh, so this is a nice little safety thing I have as well it's mounted with a little rig wheels magnetic mount which is pretty handy so that's literally just magnet which is a nice simple way to rig things up and then this ball head can give you the ability to point your shot any direction you need to. There's the angle of that Marshall so eventually you'll see the gimbal just here. I might actually point that guy down a little bit and that'll give me a nice little safe uh, view of this, the rig the whole time we're driving. So what we've got here is the Cinemill tow hitch mount which has been modified for Australian hitches because ours are a little smaller than American ones. So the Cinemill guys have just rounded off the edges here which means it's going to fit. This is the isolator from my rig wheels cloud mount which has normally has these uh, magnetic arms coming off it. I popped a little Kessler crane quick release plate on there which just gives me an easy way to get the gimbal on and off without having to like find the holes underneath and sort of fart around like an idiot. So the only trick with these is, which uh, Pedro from City Milled says in his videos, you want to make sure that you tighten all the way to one side first, so you suck it all the way to one side, and then you put your bolt in and tighten it from the other way. That way you're not going to have it sort of, not, there's not going to be any play in it. So we're going to go all the way to one side, snug it right up, and then we pop our bolt in from the other side for a bit of extra safety. You can see there's no play in that at all, which is what we want. So next step's the Crane 3S. So I've actually got a little small rig um, plate on here. The good thing is it gives me a couple of nice 3 8 bolts to go into, whereas if you didn't have this, all you've got on the bottom of the crane is a single 3 8 bolt with a couple of ARRI locator pins, which is not a lot of things I've got that can go into that and also talk to that. So I've used those two 3 8 to get this little Kessler quick release plate into. And that should be a nice, easy... Simple as that. I'll put it backwards though, so that kind of sucked. Bear with me. Hey, professional. So you can see there, there's no play in the plate itself or any of the, the mounts. And I've actually got two screws going into the bottom of that Kessler plate which means it's got no way of rotating which is pretty key. So you've got two points into here, two points into here and that means everything should stay pretty solid. So here's the gimbal rig I put together. The heart and soul of it all is the Komodo Stormtrooper and the next most important thing is the Ignite Digi Keystone cage which pretty much hasn't left this camera since I bought it. This thing's already saved it from falling off a car at 60 kilometers an hour and it's basically just the most useful flexible cage I've ever had. You can put it in any direction you need to, you can orient the camera any way you need to. We've got multiple rod mounts that I'm working off here. There's also, I'm not using it today, but there's a nice little power breakout at the bottom there where you can run D-tap to two pin and then have your three two pin Lima accessory ports, which is pretty nice. Um, and we're running the Ongino EZ2, which I've at the moment got my full frame optical block on there just because I normally run it on a Canon C500 Mark II or a Monstro. So that effectively makes it a 22 to 60 rather than the 15 to 40 that you would get with this in Super 35 mode. 
um, but it's still T3 and super nice lens. And today I'm running Nucleus M motors. I'd normally run my RT Motion stuff, but I don't actually have a three axis MDR other than the one that's built into my Monstro, the Sidekick module. And the good thing with these Nucleuses is you don't need an MDR, you just have to power them up on DTAP, loop them together, and they work with the little wireless hand grips that I'll show you in a sec. I've got the Teradek Bolt 500 on the side here, um, running a V-Lock plate here, which is a wooden camera plate that I stole off one of their battery slides. And instead of using the battery slide, I've screwed it straight into this old vintage Red Pro SWAT rail adapter. The cool thing about that is it's kind of helped me with the center of gravity and stopped it from having too much of a long back on it because I was struggling with distance on the gimbal. And it means that with this little slide, I can still, if I need to get in, get better access to the screen, I can still slide this out of the way and see what I'm doing if I need to, and then just get it back in position so it's nice and centered up. But I mean, there's enough clearance there that I can still see enough of the screen to do what I need to with the menu. And I'll be using my iPhone with the um, red control app for most of it anyway. So that's pretty straightforward. And for my power for the camera itself, I'm running this nice little right angle limo from the guys at Ignite Digi. So that's just coming off. This is a pro plate from wooden camera, which means you get three D taps where you're normally going to get one or two. But this nice little um, right angle here from the Ignite Digi guys just means that you've got a lot less clearance off the back of the camera. On the front is the wooden camera Zipbox Pro that fell off the vehicle the other day, as you can see. At the moment, I've just got a circular polarizer in there, which will we can rotate with this little guy at the bottom here. And we'll set that once we're up and running. Might throw a bit of extra ND in there as well, depending on how the shot looks. And other than that, we're pretty good to go. So might chuck it on the gimbal. This is the part I suck at balancing. You may not want to watch because it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be scientific. It's not going to be accurate. It's going to be more like a gut feeling kind of thing. This is my glorious Franken rig. Um, it's not pretty, but it's very functional. So you've got, this is the transmount receiver I was referring to. That's the motion sense controller that you need to be able to, you can control the gimbal with the joystick there. Or if you turn the switch on, you can do it like a mimic. And then I've got the nucleus um, hand grips here. I've got focus mapped there, zoom mapped there. And then this little joystick here I'm using for my iris control. And then I can see my picture here on the small HD focus bolt. So now we've got pan and tilt control on the joystick. And in theory, if I put flick this switch on, now I've got mimic control. So now it should respond to the movements of my little remote rig here. And now if I just flick that off temporarily, and turn the Teradek on, turn on the small HD, which like a total wanker, I've put my own logo into, just because I've got no life at all. So there's a very important member of um, the regular team that we use on these things who's been with us through thick and thin, um, made some incredible BTS videos, huge contributions to everything that we do. His name's Matthew Nice and he also loves to skate. Give me the camera. Hey buddy, how hey you doing? Everyone. Are you ready to be all you can be? I think so, yeah. All right, let's do this thing. <laughs> okay, so just getting a feel for the Franken rig controls here. Hopefully I stop sucking at it soon. Okay, here we go. Geez, you're looking a bit hot there. How about stopping down a franger, mate? A little more, a little more. There you go. Cloud mount isolator seems to be holding up for now. Maddie putting in some large ones there. Early days of establishing a YouTube channel. It's all favors and squeezing in shoots between paid work. Maddie's mate Jeff took half an hour off work to drive the van. What a champ. We were in such a rush, I forgot to put my one terabyte CFast 2 card into the Komodo. This is running on a 128 gig card, which is gonna bite me in the ass very soon. We're cruising the streets of Mermaid Beach on Australia's Gold Coast here. Absolute pearler of a day. I'm starting to get the controls dialed in now, although I won't be hiring myself out as a focus puller anytime soon.
this point the Komodo card filled up and since we were on the V1 firmware I didn't have any way of sending status out the SDI port so I had no idea we weren't rolling. Sure enough, I miss a bone crushing stack from Matt that you can just see on the witness camera right there. I'll never forgive myself. So we had a quick review and then Jeff had to go back to work so Matt drove and I jumped in the back of the van this time. The wireless communication to the Crane 3S was super patchy from sitting in the front of the van, which I need to get to the bottom of. Could be a conflict with the Teradek or just too much steel between the tow hitch and the front cab. Why do I always end up filming from the luggage compartment of vehicles? This combination is pretty sick and I'm going to turn on the follow mode again now. And when I was following Matt skating before, because I had no idea which direction he was going, was going to go, just being able to intuitively follow him, just using the movement of this remote while still being able to zoom and focus and correct the iris was like insane. So I'm feeling pretty clever right now. So now we're just enjoying some flary afternoon light on the road that runs right along our famous Gold Coast beaches. At this point, the cloud mount really started to struggle, eventually just going full loose butthole. Well, okay, stop. The Crane 3S didn't seem to mind though. It just hung out and had its own little dance party. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was calmly exiting the vehicle in safety and style. We tried a few more times, but the cloud mount had clearly given up on life. Well, okay. And when I got home that night, I actually discovered that I'd failed in another key way. I'd failed to put the DTAP to Limo power cable from the Power Plus battery pack into the Crane 3S. And this is the only way that they say you're able to access those higher motor strengths to, to use large payloads. So that meant that all of the footage that you just saw was the Crane 3S with this exact camera package, which is about six kilos, running only with the little three batteries internal to the gimbal. So it wasn't even connected to this Power Plus battery pack. And I've got to be honest, it was pretty smooth considering that. So while I'm a complete bonehead for, for forgetting a key piece of the kit, in a way it was kind of a cool, turned out to be a cool test to see what the capabilities are. If for God forbid you run out, you forget your Power Plus battery pack or it runs out of juice, there's still a lot you can do just using those three internal batteries. So for me, the big winner out of that was this beautiful Franken rig. Just being able to intuitively follow someone like a skater behind me who I had no idea which way he was gonna go so I could just follow him as he moved while at the same time I could be zooming, uh, focusing and pulling iris. That was pretty powerful to me. So I was pretty stoked with this. I'm just gonna flick off that before the gimbal totally freaks out. And we'll turn this guy around so you can see it in all of its glory. Nice. I'm really hoping someone from June is watching and they realize that they could sell a gazillion of these things if they opened up the control protocol so it can work with other types of controllers. I just don't think this thing's ever gonna be valid for serious use if your only options are this tiny little joystick you can use with your thumb here or the kind of you know semi-reliable mimic mode. They really need a way of this talking to things like alpha wheels or inertia wheels or even bigger joystick controllers. Just anything that can have a reliable connection to the system with more of an analog feel to the control so you can really get those kind of feathered movements that most seasoned operators are going to be looking for. So June, hope you're listening. You've got a great product here. It could be way better if it can talk to third party controllers. So obviously the next stage in this little journey will be finding a better isolator. I'm looking at the Kessler Killshock, which is kind of an industry standard. And the next thing I want to do is repeat this setup with a better isolator, probably with remembering this bloody cable and maybe shooting something at a little bit higher speed. We might get some friends who have some interesting cars to uh, get in on the action there. So look, thanks for coming on the journey. I hope that my mistakes can prevent you from experiencing the same ones. As always, it's a warts and all experience here. Um, I definitely don't know everything, but I've been doing this for about 15 years. I own a ridiculous amount of nerdy gear that I'm more than willing to put in harm's way for the benefit of all of us learning how to be more dope ass filmmakers. Thanks as always for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions. I'm doing my best to get back to everybody there. And we've got lots of really weird, fun, 
experiments planned into the future, so stay tuned for those. Uh, and look, I guess we'll just sign off, and do you want to wave goodbye? Bye, everybody. See you later. Got to get out more. Really got to get out more.